So we're going to get into our award, end of the season awards. Uh, Danny Football and I will remind you what we picked at the way too early awards. I completely turned around on, I think, every single one of my picks for different reasons. But um, we're going to start with Coach of the Year. Let's start with our guest. I want to hear what our guest has to say. Who do you think is the Coach of the Year, Pro Golfer Amen. I'd like to say Ron Rivera. because. Hey. Not not only did he take his team to the playoffs, but he also beat cancer. So I mean, it's it's a heartfelt story. Yeah. Um, but he's just I always liked him as a coach, anyways. And he took this not great team last year in the Washington football team, especially with all the drama in the off season. I know there was something going around the beginning of uh, the beginning of the season about uh, all the allegations going on. And then they had to change the whole, the whole rebranding stuff. And he took that team to the playoffs and I was pretty impressed with it, to be honest. Yeah, I can totally see him winning. Like, you know, the guys getting IVs at halftime yeah. to finish the game. I can and, he, totally and, see him. and that was who I was going to pick too. I think it shouldn't, he shouldn't win it based solely on his outside of the football stuff. I mean, I, that might, you know, kind of give it like, all right, this guy went through how much shit and he still got his team to the playoffs. But um, my guy at the beginning of the season was Sean McDermott. He could still be in the conversation, but it's insane. Just the mountains Ron Rivera moved to somehow get into the playoffs. So I think I looked, er- on that one. I looked earlier. I think Sean McDermott is the leading odds. Is he? The oh, okay. Vegas odds of winning coach of the year. Yep, um, I have him on my list too. Uh, Sean McDermott. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I have guy- one more coach too. Oh, who's you? oh, wait, let me, let me say mine before you say it. So yep. originally I had Mike Vrabel, a uh, big Mike Vrabel guy. And, you know, I it's kind of rooting for him to win coach of the year. I obviously loved his play calling last year. Um, this, but I changed, I changed to Brian Flores. I think he took this team uh, that really, I think was another year of rebuild to the playoffs. And last year, when they gutted his team to tank, he still found ways to win. I think he's a really good coach. Uh, one of he'll probably be one of the only successful coaches from the Belichick tree. Um, and he and just it took him two seasons to clean up Adam Gase's mess. And it, the thing is, like he pulls the right p- strings. Like I look at the quarterback situation. Like when all of us, including me, and I think Danny Football, I can't remember if you were on against this move, but he benched Fitzpatrick Fitzmagic for Tua for those, for those couple yeah, yeah, weeks yeah. and yep. Tua balled out and won, won some games for him. And then in the middle of some games, he's had the sense to change what was going on and put Fitzmagic in. And uh, like some of those games, he's pulled out a victory. Like he's pulled the right strings. And I think, Taking what, like you said about Ron Rivera, taking that team with the talent that it has, it's not really, it's a talented team, but it doesn't have the talent that these other playoff teams have. He lost his first round quarterback. Yeah. He, he released him. Yeah. Yeah. His quarterback is, yeah. his, and his current quarterback nearly goddamn died. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I like, I like the Dolph, I like the, uh, I like Brian Flores. I think he should have been getting votes last year. Uh, and I think he's really made a case for this year of that he should win. I, I Excuse me. He, they missed the playoffs, but they were, I think it went down to the last day. Um, I, I mean, think they went 10 thinking. and 6. I mean, that's a, uh, yeah, that's a really, that's a good record. You had double-digit wins with the Dolphins. Can we officially say that the, uh, the AFC is now better than the NFC? Yeah, no, I'd agree. Yeah, with that. yeah. I mean, we've we've it's been like we it's can get been, into it when we do the bracket, but I'd, I'd yeah, I give the AFC the edge. Yeah, I will, like you said, we'll get into it when we do the bracket. But I, I like I was looking at that today, and it's like for we've all been told that the N- NFC is way better than the AFC, and I like all the records. There's no teams under single digits in the AFC bracket, and there's a double digit team wins that didn't make the playoffs. Sorry. Continuing, um, I'm going with for we'll do defensive rookie of the year. I think it's uh, I first had Tavon Diggs, which I don't know why I did that. That was that was <laughs> ridiculous. Um, I'm going Chase Young. I think it's a no brainer. I think it's a slam dunk uh, defensive rookie of the year. 
Uh, the kid is unbelievable player for Washington football team. He's a main reason why that defense is as solid as it is, and he's one year in the league. So I think that's going to be a nice defensive piece for that team, and I think he's a player to build around going forward. But I think he's had a heck of a year. Did he not start the season? Did he miss the first couple of games? Um, I'm trying to figure out why I, I didn't think pick he, him I think in the he early did, season. I think he did play, but it wasn't like – I don't think he made as big of an impact in the beginning of the season. Like, I don't mm. remember him being like uh, as good the as second half of the season. He really took off. Like right. Right, off. right when the Redskins actually started to take off and be like, wow, these guys aren't actually that bad is when he started to. Yeah. When they, I think he, he just brought that energy. They he's went on like guy, a win I'm streak. Not, I'm just not he, sure why I didn't pick him at the beginning of the season, but he's my guy now. Yeah. I think it's, I think he's it's my no, guy too. I think it's no surprise. I think he's going to run away with the defensive rookie of the year. I don't, I don't think there's a question about it. Um, Offensive rookie of the year, uh, Tanny Football. I think we disagree on this, but I'm gonna. I'll start with mine. Uh, I said Joe Burrow in the beginning of the year because he was looking good awesome. up until he blew his knee out. Yeah, like until he blew his knee out, I think he was gonna be the offensive rookie of the year. My guy is uh, Justin Herbert. Kid is a stud. Um, it, he just was lights out for uh, the Chargers. He put up big numbers. Since he got in there, I think he had a couple, I mean, minus the Patriots game and maybe one other game. He was like a stud for the rest of the year. I, he had unbelievable numbers this year, and I think he's going to be the offensive rookie of the year. Yeah, I started off the season with Lamb. He didn't have a horrible season, but I definitely think Herbert blew up, and I, I, wanna, I think Justin Jefferson may be able to get the edge on him, man. I mean, breaking Randy Moss's rookie – um, receiving yards record, I think he could maybe steal it from Herbert. So I'm going to go Justin Jefferson. I like Justin Jefferson too. I, I have him in a couple fantasy leagues too as keepers. So I, I, I really like that pick. Uh, and like you said, he broke the, the Randy Moss record, which was crazy. Unbelievable. Crazy unbelievable. May? I mean, I have, I have two guys written down, Jefferson and Herbert. But um, Ooh. Who do you give the edge? It's so close. I mean, I, I want to give it to Herbert because he threw for more yards than Aaron Rodgers, who a lot of people are talking about for MVP. He threw the most passing touchdowns by a rookie. I mean, he had a three three to one TD to interception ratio. Um, he just seems like he just set himself up. He's going to be the future of that team. He's just he, a, he also wasn't pegged to even play this season, guy. People forget that. If yeah, doctor, he didn't. If a doctor doesn't mess up Tyrod Taylor, he doesn't even play. Which I think he did it on purpose. Now, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he uh, he didn't play what the first few games of the season, right? Didn't he even well, not play the, the first, first one or two of, games of the season? I think it was the first like three or four games. So he throws for three hundred in those those two games. He's, he throws for almost five thousand yards in his first year. Jeez. Yeah. Adding maybe another three to four touchdowns onto that too. Thirty-five touchdowns. That would be insane. Yeah. He uh he played uh, no he only actually he only missed one game. It Did he only he played, miss one game? It says he played fifteen games played, which I feel like he sat more than that. But I guess he only sat no, one week, game. Week two kind of sounds right. Yeah, I'm surprised he played that early. Maybe well, it's because Tyrod Taylor. Well, right. Yeah, because yeah, they fucking stabbed him in the rib or his yeah. lung, right? Yeah, he punctured his lung. Uh yeah, I'm looking at his stats, like man, he was like he threw. 31 TDs and 4,336 yards. Yeah, which is insane. He's like, he was just under 200 yards shorter of just, uh, Josh Allen. And you said, like, you could, I think it's fair to say he plays one more game. I think it's safe to say he gets 200 yards. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, he could have been in the top five in passing yards. And then let's see if he, what he said in touchdowns compared to the rest of the league. He he would have been a he probably would have been top ten. I think he's top ten anyways. He's he's the tenth. He is the tenth most touchdowns, and the next um, Big Ben, Tannehill, and Deshaun all at thirty three, and uh, Herbert at thirty one. So he could have passed those guys. He could have been tied yeah. at least tied with those guys. So um, I liked I like Justin Herbert. I think he is the favorite right now, Vegas odd favorite. Uh, but I think he earned it, man. He's he's a stud. And he's, I, I wish the Patriots got him. <laughs> I think I think Jefferson started off real hot, like right in the you know middle of the season, but he kind of fizzled out a little bit. Um, 
And then I mean, he he's still awesome. The end. Then he like, picked I it up like, again. But I feel like he was like this and then finished like that, which helps him. I think in this, I think it's going to be close. I think that one. I think it's going to be real be close. Surprised. Um, all right. Defensive player of the year. Danny football. Who do you have? I started with Miles Garrett and I'm going to end with Miles Garrett. Um, he may want, he may not be the odds on favorite, but I think he had a pretty good season. So I'm going to ride with my man. All right. Uh, We'll go a May. I went with uh, T.J. Watt. Uh, he led the leagues in sacks, um, and he kind of led a decent defensive Steelers, like, for the whole season. Um, Definitely carried that squad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's just, a, he's just a great player. I, I started with Aaron Donald, who I think is still a possible favorite. I mean, he's always a favorite to win the defensive player of the year. But I went with TJ Watt as well. 15 sacks, man. Like, that's unbelievable. 26 tackles for losses uh, in the season as well. He had an INT. Uh, he led the league in uh, tackle for losses as well. So uh, he's the heart and soul, I think, of that defense, that Steelers defense, which has been pretty dominant most of the year. Uh, and he's just a stud. I think he's uh, – he, I have him in my IDP league, and he's – I, there's a reason he's like, well, I think he's the best defensive player in the league. So I, without a doubt, I think I got to go TJ Watt for defensive player of the year. They usually give it a sacks leader too. Like unless someone has like a crazy amount of interceptions, they always give it to the guy who has the most sacks pretty much. Um, all right. So for the final one, the big award, we'll go with MVP. Uh, who wants to go first? Let's give Wait. it to the guest. Let's give it a guess. Right. I said at the beginning of the year, I said he had a chip on his shoulder. He was going to come out and play great. And then uh, I'm going to stick with him and I'm going to go with A Rod. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, 4,300 yards, 48 touchdowns, only five picks. He led the Packs 13 and three record. It's just, I mean, you could obviously give it to that other guy, whatever his name is. But uh, yeah, I think, I think Aaron Rodgers is, he deserves the MVP after this year. All right, uh, him and Jack should have seen this coming with the chip on his shoulder after Jordan Love came in. Yeah, I I said yep. it. I originally in the beginning of the season I said uh, Russell uh, and Russ. I said him because of how good he was playing at the time, but he fizzled out. But I'm going back with my draft day choice or MVP, which I wish I put money on is Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers came out with a chip on his shoulder, like we said after they drafted the. Uh, new uh, quarterback of the future. The Aaron Rodgers, Darren Rodgers. The heir to Aaron Rodgers in the first round. They wasted a first round pick, not wasted, I guess I shouldn't say that, but they used a first round pick on a quarterback. Sending when they a have clear a, message to him. Sending a clear message. And they not only that, they drafted a running back with their second round pick when they had an all pro running back. A.J. Dillon. So they didn't use any weapons to help Aaron Rodgers. It was all future weapons. So I thought from the beginning he was going to use this as a chip on his shoulder year, uh, and he didn't disappoint. He led the league in uh, touchdowns. Uh, he's top in the league in passing yards. Um, uh, uh, QBR, if you like that. I know a lot of nerds, football <laughs> players, love the QB, uh, passer rating and the quarterback rate of rating. It's like, but I look at he throws he threw the most touchdowns. He has a bunch of yards. Um, like you said, Patrick Mahomes is always going to be in the conversation. But uh, I think from start to finish, Aaron Rodgers has been the most consistent player this season. Just to round it out, my guy, um, I went with Russ too. I think at the time he was balling out. That's when he was uh, giving John like 70 points. Um, I know I was the I was the Kyler Murray guy with the second year MVP, the uh, second year MVP streak, but um, it's Aaron Rodgers. I mean, the dude was just dominant. Packers number one seed. The dude ran through the league. He was consistent all year. So it's gonna be. It's gonna he be deserves Rogers. it. Yeah, hundred percent. He deserves it. And I hate it because I become the biggest uh, this year. I've become a huge def defender of Aaron Rodgers, which I can't stand that I'm actually becoming that guy. I, I don't like it when people put him above Brady. Uh, I don't, I don't, all time, I don't put him above Brady. No. This year, I put him above Brady, but yeah. 
all but time. Not, yeah. yeah, not absolutely career now. Um, and that my buddy's a huge Green Bay Packers fan, and we battle with that all the time. He still thinks Aaron Rodgers is better than Tom Brady in his career, uh, and I hate that I'm defending Aaron Rodgers at this time, but mm-hmm. he deserves it. But give credit where credit is due. 